Hello, Tokyo. Hello, Japan. So glad to... Um, I'm in Paris. Oh, I wish I could undo that. Luckily, today, in just five minutes, I will tell you how to empower us your users to undo their mistakes. For that, let's get into some state management 101. In the context of a to-do application, let's say, you have your front end that is reflective of what? Your application state. And let's say you start inputting something and you press enter, your front end will change that will reflect the change in the application state. So, in the context of uh, undo redo that you might want to build, the way you may think about it at first is that through time you have different snapshots of your application state. So simple, if you want to undo redo, all you have to do is travel between your application states, right? Is it really that simple? The reality is a little bit different in a more complex web application. Sure, your application state will change with an action, but that action might have side effects, which triggers other actions, which in turn will change the application state also. On top of that, you may have some backend app operations that are running. So, you have your to-do application, and you're trying to input multiple to-dos in a row. On the first to-do you do, or you enter, there's gonna be a sequence of actions that are triggered. Right after you decide to input another to-do, another sequence of actions will be triggered. So now you look at your application thread, and you're trying to move between different snapshots of the state to undo redo between different user actions. How do you deal with that? Because you'll run into some concurrency. Well, that may be a relatively simple solution. You encapsulate the sequential actions into an action identifier, in this case, a UUID. Magic. So, you encapsulate your actions, you store them, you basically already have your redo, or your do, however you want to call it. But in parallel, what you can do is also store your undo. So what you might need is a mapping system that maps each action to an opposite. Et voila, you have your undo. So, in the context of a little user flow, you have the user that's creating a to-do, boom, in parallel, the opposite is being created. They decide to show a certain specific to-do, the opposite is also stored in parallel. So you have both. And now the user decides to trigger the undo command the change will be reflected in the application state. You know what? Let's actually redo this. The application state will change accordingly, again. So what are the key points here? You have to capture your actions, map each action to its opposite, encapsulate the sequences, and create the commands to apply the undo, redo. You may learn more about this on the Content Square Engineering blog. There's a specific article on that subject, or if you want to know more about other things that we've done. From now, check how you would encapsulate your actions so that you can help your users undo their mistakes. Thank you, Japan.